Hey everyone, welcome back for another Unraid video. Today we're going to look at how to install a persistent instance of FFmpeg and its sister application, FFprobe, into Unraid itself so that we can benefit from their use via command line instead of relying on a Docker container. Initially when I started working on this video I realized how long it was because I spent so much time focusing on what FFmpeg does and how to do it that I was just overcomplicating it. There are plenty of FFmpeg and FFprobe use guides on YouTube and across the net so I'm not going to spend much time focusing on the what and the why but more on the how. So I scrapped that and went back to the drawing board. Before we dive in, I have to give big props and full credit for this tutorial to the Reddit user Stupefier, whose instructions for this I found buried in an old post. I'll link his original post down below for anyone interested. It was a help to me, as I'm sure it was to others, so I wanted to pass it along. Thanks again, Stupefier. Now, let's get started. For this installation, we'll be working almost entirely from the command line, but first we need to copy a link address to paste into our terminal window. I've left a link in the description, quick shout out to John Van Sickle for his static builds that we'll be using today. So open this link in a new browser tab. Most likely you'll be using this AMD64 build here, but if not, select your appropriate build, then right click the link, copy the link, then back on our Unraid tab, we need to make sure we have a share to place the FFmpeg folder. So go to the Shares tab and either select a share that is cache only or create a new cache only share. So I'm going to add one real quick called Documents. And on this test server, I'm only using a cache drive. But for your case, make sure right here that you have use cache pool selected to only. Then hit add share. Once that's done, then we can click the terminal window icon in the top right. And now we can navigate to the share we just made by typing cd slash mount slash user slash documents. Once inside this share, type w get space and then we're going to paste in that address that we just copied a moment ago. Right click there, paste, and hit enter. This will pull and download the FFmpeg static build to our cache drive. Just to confirm, you can type ls to view the contents of the folder, and we can see it downloaded right there. Real quick, I'm going to make a subfolder to keep the document share clean for future use, and place this inside by typing the following. Make directory ffmpeg, then mv, and the archive file name ffmpeg get amd64 static dot tar dot xz to ffmpeg now if we hit ls we can see our ffmpeg folder so let's go ahead and navigate inside of that once inside it's time to unpack this archive file by typing the following tar xvf and then the archive file name ffmpeg get amd64 static.tar.xz we can type ls to list the files now let's rename this unpacked folder to something a little more manageable. I'm going to try MV FFmpeg get 
2021-1013, AMD 64, static to just FFmpeg git. Now we can see that renamed a little easier. Fortunately, Mr. Van Sickle has already made the files we need executable. So now we just need to symlink this installation into our user bin folder so that we can use ffmpeg and ffprobe regardless of what directory we're working in. I know it seems like a lot of typing now, but the good news is we only have to do all this one time. If you've been following along with me so far, then enter the following. ln-s slash mnt user documents ffmpeg slash ffmpeg git slash ffmpeg space slash usr slash bin slash ffmpeg Now let's do the same thing for ffprobe. The good news is you can hit the up arrow on your keyboard to populate the previous command and then just use the left and right arrow keys to change ffmpeg to ffprobe. There should be two spots that you need to make this change in. Then hit enter again. Lastly, we want this install and all the work that we've put into it to persist after we reboot our servers, so we need to edit our Go file. For that, type nano slash boot slash config slash go and add the two previous commands we entered in the terminal at the bottom of the file like this. I've already copied and pasted these to save time, but you may want to pause here to type these in for your case. Once you get those entered, hit Control O to save and Control X to exit. Now we should be all set. The reason we don't install FFmpeg directly to our user bin folder is because it would get wiped out after a reboot. By downloading to our cache drive, the files are permanently saved there. The commands we entered into the Go file will create our symlink for us each time Unraid loads and link the install into our user bin folder. Only thing left to do now is take it for a quick test drive. Now there's a couple ways you can execute the ffmpeg and ffprobe commands, either by typing the absolute path and file name of the file you're gonna use from any directory, or navigating to the file's parent folder and then typing the file name in. I prefer to navigate to the directory first, which I've already done here. So to see the file name, I'm going to type ls. Now that I know what it is, just as an example, I'll type ffprobe plus the file name and hit enter. So here's all the ffprobe version information. Then down here is the, the media file information. So there's our input, 21 Jump Street, Blu-ray 1080p MP4. Um, we can see the duration, the bitrate. Uh, the first stream is a video stream, it's an HEVC codec, uh, no metadata for this one. The second stream is an audio AAC codec, stereo at 93 kilobits a second. Now if you wanted to try something a little cleaner, you could type ffprobe and then enter the modifier of hide banner. Now you can see it just looks a little cleaner and there's all kinds of different options that you can use. Just as one last example, I'll go ahead and run a quick ffmpeg command. And this is gonna let us change the container format from a .mp4 to a .mkv. And note on the syntax for ffmpeg that you definitely need to use actual quotation marks around your file names with spaces Otherwise, FFmpeg is not going to play very nice without that. So let's hit enter. And you can watch this run. It doesn't take it very long to remux it from an MP4 to an MKV. So now let's hit LS to list the, fire, the files. 
and we can see our original mp4 file there and there's our new mkv file right there before we head out i'll leave you with a word of caution if you decide to do any sort of heavy lifting with ffmpeg on the the command line such as changing your uh, codex audio codex video codex anything like that uh, be sure and note that it will use all available cpu power there are some more complicated ways that you can go into restricting the resource usage of FFmpeg on the command line. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to read some about that. But uh, hopefully this install video will get you guys pointed in the right direction. As I said before, there's tons of material on what you can do and how to do it with FFmpeg and FF Pro both. If you've enjoyed this video or would like to see some more stuff on FFmpeg, be sure to leave a comment down below if you're new to the channel. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, have a great day.